Hello, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how to build the new 5x5 five five, uh, flush cave door, tra cave trap door which is also the 5x5 five five non-flush um, cave trap door seamless Which just spams burnouts on every fucking side. But that's how you do it. So let's get into it. Uh, you want a ele an 11 by 12 hole, which uh, is 4 deep. I mean, 5 deep technically, because like you know, this is this is 4, and then the door actually goes to here. So if you want a floor around that, you need to get there, and you know. Um. And you're going to need the following ingredients. Ingredients, wow. Uh, 14 torches, uh, 28 uh, redstone dust, 26 repeaters, 58 stickies, 7 normals, 5 redstone blocks, 11 comparators, 13 droppers, 11 hoppers, a dispenser with a water bucket, uh, 2 detector rails or any other form of redirection in 1.16 plus. You can also just use the dotted, um, a dotted dust. But I'm, we made this, or like I, I, I got rid of all the 1.16 features, so this should work since 1.13 uh, with the note blocks, I think. Uh, one furnace and then two note blocks. Uh, you're gonna need a toggled input, so either a lever or a button with a T flip flop. Uh, 80 door blocks and uh, like a stack and a bit of building blocks, if you want to color code them, there you go. As well as nine slabs and very importantly, one soul sand. And besides all of this shit, you're going to need uh, four chest mine cards, uh, two non-item mine cards, so either TNT normal or furnace, and then a hopper mine card as well. Uh, to place them, you're going to need anvils, powered rails, and uh, you're going to need an anvil, two powered rails, and an oak trapdoor. And um, I mean, any trapdoor will work. Fence would also do it, but um, you'll you'll see why this is important later. And then two unstackable items and twenty-two stackable items. Good. So our input will be right here, and it is currently off on. So what we have here is. Um, this, oh, this is like the input to the entire door, with a comparator and our two unstackable items. We need them for reasons which will be obvious later. So this is our input. We fire it from here with a torch like this. So if we power this on, the input will go on and then the input will go off again. But we need to refire the entire door after a certain amount of delay. So we add a hopper timer like this to have a hopper we have a, we have a hopper timer like this with eight items in it, which will uh, which will then trigger this de trigger this burnout, which is why there needs to be two items in here. Uh, to give another constant pulse. So we turn it on, it, it turns on because it's um, hard part from below. And then we turn it off, the item timer goes down and then it pulses again. So that's how we refire everything and that, that's the input corner. So for the next thing we have our redstone block slider right here, which goes through these blocks. This one is a door block, so this will be the one in the center of the door. And then we have our grabber, like here. Well, this one is currently budded. And the back one will be powered from well, there, and the front one will be powered from here with a 4 tick and a 2 tick. 3-3 uh, three, three should also work, but this is the way it's built, so that's how I build it. Uh, the reason we need this delay, this corner actually used to look different, but uh, I have been informed that these corners actually fail if there's an obsidian right here. So now it's like on a delay. Yeah. And with that we can get into the actual layout. So we have a triple plus extender on this side with a block right here for the triple. 
And then we have a double post extender here, a double post extender here, single, 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 and on this side we also have a double post extender with a piston facing upwards and another piston right there. And then the same thing happens here again with the double piston extender facing upwards and, you know, that's just how it is. And there's actually another double right here. So that's this side. This looks already daunting. So the other three sides are very simple. We just have two doubles like so, and then three singles. So double right there, single, double, single, single, and over here we have double, double, single, single, single as well. So as well as that, there's this piston, this piston, and oh yeah, that one's already covered. So that should be everything for now. Then for these corners, we have, well, for this one, we have a flushing piston right here, which grabs away this wall block. The same thing happens over here. We grab away the wall block in front of the double piston extender. And then for these corners, we have a double piston extender right here with this piston and this piston. So what happens is we have these cover ups, these cover up blocks, right there, which get grabbed away. This one pushes up, this one gets pushed back in, then this extends, and then this extends. And then for the retraction, this retracts in an, AB, in an ABC CBA gate, and then this one does a double, and then this one extends again. This corner, these two corners were made by RELP and that stuff was made by me because I did not have the time or patience to, to do these corners. So shoutouts to RELP and uh, yeah. Um, from here our signal comes into gray with a torch up. This is what updates that I guess. But, um, this is what Oops, this one's actually right here, my mistake. Um, this is what um, opens up the wall right here. And then we also have a dust, a slab, and a fortic running into the wall. This fortic is for the two doubles, which actually are right here because I am stupid. And this one isn't here, I guess. And this one isn't here, this is here, and this one isn't here, this is here. My bad. Um, so, this one, right, uh, th that goes into there. And then, as well as that, we have the flushing uh, dust going into this block, which ultimately powers uh, this piston pointing upwards. Uh, to not cut this off, we need another slab right here, and for this we have a dropper hopper invert right here, which is grey, I guess, as well as a torch on the side, which once again fucks up the burnout, which then goes into a one tick into a block to do the extension of um, the front of this double stick center. Um, it hard powers this block, which updates this piston, which then prevents the lower piston from pushing. And then when we push this in, it does the full extension and then double piston extender stuff happens, you know. So, yeah. From here, the single goes into a block with dust, and then we just add a burnout right here, which is what causes all the spam in every corner ever. And now we get into the fun part. So, th there's an invert right here, or like an artificial invert right here, with two droppers, which inverts the invert again. So, the item is currently in the front. 
And then we read this into a T flip flop, which is right there. And we place a half a fuck Um We give this a chest my card. And a light grey item in the top. So this gets read outwards like this into a dust, but this can't push right now, so this just goes there. So that's what powers um, the the bottom of this um, double. Then there's also this burnout, which either needs a dotted, um, which either needs a dotted dust so it doesn't fire the droppers, or in one point uh, before one point sixteen, you just place a redirector right there. So that does the retraction and extension of this double piston extender. Uh, next up, we want a dust right here, a four tick right there, into a block, torch, two tick, block, three tick. And that just repeats right here with the burnout, but we're not, you know. Uh, as well as our block with a four tick, our slab with dust for the doubles, and then our solid wall block right there. So if we fire this right now, we get um, nothing because we need a dust right there and a block right there to power this piston in its current state. So if we fire this right now, you see that? And then there is an updated piston right here to re-extend this. And then there is a block right here and a three tick. And that brings it to here. As well as a block with a three tick on in there into a solid ball block which extends the corner. And if we turn this off, it goes to this state, then it retracts, and then we get to right here. Now this is directional. Because if we build this exact same thing in this corner, it will work, it will update this, and it will extend again. So this corner is directional, and to fix this, we simply add a slab, another slab, a dust, a four tick, and a block right here. I came up with this directionality fix to Ralph's corner, so all of this stuff belongs to Ralph, and then, you know, doesn't really matter, but like, uh, why didn't you close properly? Why didn't you pro close properly? Open properly. Uh, yeah, if I didn't reset the corner properly. Um, so you're right here, you're right there, and you're right there. Oh, the, the item in the TV flop is still wrong. Okay, so in the open state, the item needs to be in the top, not the bottom. So the directionality fix actually doesn't fuck that up. So right now, that's there, that's there, and that is there. And now if you fire it, this should work. So on, closes, and then we wait for the items, and then we open it again. gets pulled down, and then extends again. So the way this extends is because this is currently the single strength one because of this item. And then this repeater off the burnout puts it to 15. And the jump back down from 15 to one is actually what updates this piston to extend. And uh, yeah, we just repeat the exact same thing over here. So we add the invert inverter right here with uh, two, two droppers interfacing into each other. We add a, an item in the front one. We have a T flip flop right here. Um, 
we drop in a chest minecart. Guess off our minecart would do as well, but whatever. Read that into dust and put an item in the top. Uh, don't forget the burnout double right here with the redirector in case you're before 1.16. Uh, dust right there, block into there, and then we can uh, cut this off. Four tick, torch, another four tick with a slab. Uh, solid wall block right there. Two tick, dust, three tick right here, three tick right here. Three tick right here. And don't forget this updater piston. And that's this corner done. I hope. Should be. If we add this and this burnout. So if we just close this. Notice how we didn't build the wide directionality fix there. You only need this uh, directionality fix in south-north, which will be the z-axis, if I believe. Yep, that's positive z. And the x-axis is completely fine. It all depends on whether this comparator updates um, updates the, the, the top piston or the right piston first. So the sideways one, if it updates first, the wall closes automatically, which is what happens in that corner. And in the other direction, the... As you can see right here, this extends, and here the glass got pushed upwards instead. So, um... Yeah, that's uh, three quarters done, pretty much. Uh, might as well fill in the wall while we're at it. So this can all be filled up without issues and then in this corner we need to wait because we're going to place a bunch of stuff right here uh, so yeah for this corner we can't have the 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 same thing we do right here because obviously we have this storage down here which prevents us from placing this double and uh, also this uh double plus extender right here is uh, kind of blocking all the things so yeah another thing is due to the way this triple works we can't actually let the refire happen here so we need to either add a t flip flop or like a toggle which only lets one pulse through instead of two, or what I do, I just extend the pulse so hard that it just doesn't register ever that there were two to begin with. So, first of all, this block right here is power over comparator, and that's what's giving this this uh, piston the upwards pulse. So, Unlike the others, this one is actually coming from diagonally above. That's coming directly from the burnout, which just has a drop up above it with an item in it. So the next thing is actually this piston, which is powering, which it has this redstone block, which conveniently closes the wall for us, and then has this item timer with five items in it. So what this does is it extends, obviously, and then the five items go in here. And then when everything unpowers, the five items start flowing out. But on the fourth item, the refire happens. So the refire arrives and the refire like turns on this piston again. So this comparator does not register that there was a gap. So this turns on, stays on while everything is doing the refire, and then turns off. And that just powers um, what you'd expect. Uh, that powers this double, that powers all the other stuff. 
So because we need to bud, the, or we need to update the piston from here because um, this, if we just power this, this piston won't realize it. So we need to place a block. Right, uh, we need to place a piston right here, which will then extend the thing. That's the last thing which I which got added because um, yeah, that was the last thing. So you want ticked, which you're not supposed to. And uh, yeah. Okay, just had to make sure. So from here we actually go into the triple circuit. The triple circuit is your standard um, uh, is your standard circuit. So you just have uh, dust right there, four tick off of this piss, um, two tick into a dust into that block with a node block to update the redstone lock piston here and a node block right there to update the back piston off of this dust. And that's just your standard triple circuit if we um, if we have a redstone block right there, which we do. If we fire this, we get a full extension. And then if we pulse this quickly, we get the full triple retraction. That circuit has been known for ages and uh, that push the double piston extenders, which was not supposed to happen. So that's another reason why we can't refire this side. Then these doubles will just break and this wall closer will not close walls, which is its total purpose. Yeah. So we power this with just a dust line coming from right here. And for the refire, we actually have a falling edge right there. So that just does the falling edge for the for the short pulls. This is not working out the way I want it to. Uh, this is on a 40 delay, and then that's the extension. That's the retraction, and then once again, extension, retraction. You know the drill. And now we get into the fucky part, because, well, if we just close this right now. You see what's missing. Oh, so there was a double piston extender. Okay, so there's a double piston extender right there. Um, so what's missing is the middle double piston extender, which will just be powering, uh, we just put a solid block into this wall slot that will close up this, and then if we somehow get power to these guys, we are done. Now, how do we power all of these guys? We put a, put a, we put a dust right there, obviously. How do we power that dust? We put a piston right here with a block, and we push that block in front of an always-on comparator. Obviously. And that's the closing. Now, for the opening, we run into another issue. And here you can see what I mean. This uh, comparator is ticking down while the while the refire is happening, and now it finally is allowed to close. So, our issue is this double piston extender needs to retract. And how do we do that? Well. What if, just maybe, what if we had a burnout right there? Right there. Oh, hey, that did the double. Perfect. Oh, wait, it fucked up the triple. Shit. Yeah, so th this burnout works. Like, it, it will work, and in, in, uh, with all the timings, will work, but it's so precisely timed that like a single tick of delay anywhere will completely screw up everything because the burnout is also powering the double and the triple below it so everything has to play it together perfectly to make sure that every everything closes on itself which uh, this should do and then we also need to add a um, block right here because the burnout will also deliver the middle pulls, so from this dust through this block into this piston to, to grab the to grab the thing. 
So if we fire the, the, this again, you will see that, um, I mean, the extension isn't really anything to look at. So now we wait for uh, this item loop, and that item loop is shorter and doesn't matter. So um, now we have this, and then the refire happens on the other sides. So that comparator will keep things on. Then if we just look at that, You see how the burnout is perfectly timed to avoid everything else? Yeah. So, now we have two issues which remain. For, I mean, obviously we need to still build the slider. So, after the slider we have two issues which remain. Which is, how do we close these budded, um, these budded, uh, things? So... The answer to that, let's just put Lime. This one will be directly updated by Lime, as Lime will just hard power this block, which will then extend the, the thing. And then the other side, there is a trick. So how do we do Lime? Well, we need to like do Lime after after the whole triple S fire. So naturally, we just read the falling edge. And then we need the falling edge, and then we need a bit of delay for the burnout to finish, because the burnout actually is still ticking while the falling edge is like hitting hard. So, yeah. Now, initially, we should also probably cut this off, and then we need to break a bunch of stuff anyways uh, for the to build the item loop right here. So. Initially, I just had another burnout right here, which um, which would have done the thing because if you place a three tick like this and then put a burnout right there, this will um, this should close this should close the thing if we update it with uh, the proper timing or not. Maybe this was a four tick. Yeah, there you go. So with a with a four tick and a burnout, this would close the thing naturally. But uh, I've run into issues because I had this for the longest time, and then this burnout, um, this burnout, this piston, and this piston happened, and all of a sudden there was no way to get to this thing anymore because I had this, and then the burnout updated this piston, and this piston updated this torch, and then everything just broke. So I had to get a new thing, and then uh, I was I was talking to Vipali when I when I was building the stage, and then I was just like, you know what I do when I can't hardwire something? We're just gonna we're just gonna put an item loop into here, right? So let's just build an item loop. So this dropper is our home dropper, and this dropper is our reset dropper, and then we have an hopper a hopper right here. And then we have a hopper right there. And then remember, this is a uh, this right here is the double, right? So this is the double. And then this is the uh, this is the this is the thing we we read for lime into a three tick. So now we need to connect this to that while there are pistons right here. So the easiest way of doing that is to kill everything which is here currently and start our soul sand bullshit. So we want a soul sand with a with a repeater on it, repeater on it, as well as our clipped minecart at anvil distance. So we need our pillow card, which is this one. Push it against an anvil or anything with an anvil hitbox. I think a grindstone is the other most common thing. I just break that and then break the rail under it. That puts it at exactly end rod height. And with end rod height, we can uh, push it in and move on with our lives. So this is now at the perfect height that if we Throw in a hopper minecart like so, which is floaty in that direction. So just zero ticket. Uh, 
that would put this at a perfect height, where this is barely high enough to be read by this hopper, as you can see. So we just put the thing with fire. And then uh, we can place this again, we can place this again, and we can place this clip minecart. This is just a normal, normal clip minecart, which we run against uh, anything, really. And then push it, break that, break the rail under it, and there we go. Now, because this is inside a double piston extender, we need to make sure that this can't be pushed outwards, because the piston will push it forwards. So either you place like a, a fence or something here if it's clipped for, for deep enough into it, or what I just like to do is just place a place a trapdoor, open it, and now if we ever get to push this, it will stay inside the will stay inside the hopper. So that's why you need the trapdoor or something with hitboxes similar to it. I think a column should also work, but I'm not sure on that. Um. Yeah. Uh, to finish things off, we need a we need to place our our other minecarts. So right here we need a we need another pillow for another minecart to sit on top. Uh, ignore the rotation that fixes itself. And lastly, we need a chest minecart on top of it. And then we take this chest minecart and we push it over into the hopper minecart like. So, you saw that move a tiny bit, and now we break the extended piston, and now this is a double floaty, I think. So, why this mess? The mess because what we currently have here is piston proof. So, this double piston extender right here, we need to push it back in place. That minecart will not move by the pistons anymore, because forward it's blocked by the trapdoor and backwards it's blocked by internal hitboxes of the hopper. And this piston right here won't be able to push the minecarts because the bottom minecart is stuck against the repeater. And the top minecart is actually colliding with that piston and the block under it. So this piston won't do shit. I mean, it will pull the chest minecart backwards a little bit, but that doesn't matter. It's outside. It's not floaty towards the uh, towards the uh, the hopper, so it's like not interacting with the hopper. And even if it would be interacting with the hopper, it doesn't matter. We we don't read the hopper minecart. We read the hopper, so we just need to get an item from this dropper to have that hopper. So it doesn't matter if it takes a shortcut or not. Um, yeah, and then this piston this piston is equally unable to push up the minecart because uh, once again it collides with these two blocks and at the back it will collide with this piston. And this piston isn't able to like bug push this backwards because uh, it's like way too f it's, it's like not behind it so. We're good on that. And then we can replace this, and then we need to push in this from above because the hopper minecart is actually colliding with, like, you can't place it right there. Um, and then we place this, and then we replace, break that. Um, then we replace this guy with this item. Replace this. And replace that piston. Fix all of you. And finally, our comparator, which we broke, as well as this dust. Because this is actually not a dust, this is right here. This is our dispenser with a water bracket inside. Uh, if you're after the aquatic update, you can place this downwards and place a slab in this position. That will make it work. If you're before the aquatic update and you want to build this, um, that also works, don't worry. You can instead po make this point sideways into this block right here, and then just place uh, dummy blocks so the water doesn't break anything. I just like to place it downwards to, uh, to, to make it look nicer. So, the, the, you might be noticing, well, this just refires on itself. Exactly, that's the point. We need to fire this twice, remember? 
because uh, we're currently in this position. Imagine that were that were those were pushed over. So we're currently in this position, and if we fire this once with an item, you see we get to this position where one of them got pushed over and the, the storage extends permanently, and then this fires again. So we can fire this again, and then hey, we're at the position we want to actually be in. Minus that one. So, conveniently enough, this, these two items right here will be pushed f out of the storage into the main dropper by the burnout on the refire. So when the refire happens, this, thing, this guy just puts its two items into here and then this will just loop on itself, which is nice and convenient, <laughs> you know. And um, yeah, now we're almost done. So the last mystery to solve is how do we update this? Well, the easiest way is to just place a normal piston right on top of the redstone block. So when the wall closes, the redstone block gets pu pushed under this uh, piston. This piston will extend, and that extension will update this to close the wall, which is everything done. If we replace this piston, of course, which we broke, and uh, open. So once again, if you watch the left on the storage, and there on the right, you saw how the wall closes. So, um. Yeah, that's everything, and um, yeah. So to once again go in on uh, how intricate these timings are, um, if you place a one tick right here in this dust, the triple pissing center closing will work, but the triple expander opening will require a six tick delay right here which would make this like basically impossible to wire so then i had the idea to like use signal strength comparison to artificially fake this delay from the hopper and then everything just went to shits and if you place a, if you place a one tick in the 60 grid here, the triple will work, but then the double above the triple will fail due to the burnout being like awfully timed. So if you place a three tick right here, the opening will work on both the triple and the double if this is a six tick. But actually, no, then this has to be an eight tick, and then but the closing doesn't work on the extension because this piston extends fast enough into this dust that this dust fucks up the triple by powering the, the this thing instead of this thing and you know so you can't have a repeater here and I, that took me way too long to realize so like i went through all the possible repeater timing then just was like okay what if i do it zero and zero just happened to work so once again let's just look at this and um yeah, so the, initially there was a target right right there. Turns out that was unnecessary. You can just have a have a solid thing right here. So the target was just a a thinking ahead on redirecting things which could cause problems, which actually don't cause problems, but better safe than sorry. So um yeah. Here it comes. And um, one last time, if you look at these two double twist extenders right here for the flushing, you will, and the, the way the wall closes up, you will notice that they also are like perfectly timed to do the thing. Yeah, that's everything. That's how you build this. Uh, that's every last detail which I could have 
told you without artificially extending the video for too long and um, yeah. Thank you for watching, shoutouts to Ralph. The store wouldn't exist without Ralph. Like the layout was floating around on my plot and now and he was like, oh wanna do this and I was like yeah, but like I, I really don't want to do these corners. And he was like, "Oh, I can do the corners if you do the triple." And then I, he did the, he did the double, and I, I did the triple, and then I fixed directionality, and then it works. Um, yeah. Now the flush is actually the non-flush world record. Bye.